Today I want to share with you how to bake bread without yeast. This is a very easy soda bread and it's a perfect substitute for those round artisan loaves of bread when you don't have any yeast or sourdough starter. So stay home and cook with me. Hi sweet friends, I'm Mary and welcome to Mary's Nest where I teach traditional cooking skills for making nutrient-dense foods like bone broth, ferment, sourdough, and more. So if you enjoy learning about those things, consider subscribing to my channel. And don't forget to click on the little notification bell below. That'll let you know every time I upload a new video. Well, I think this has really got to be one of the easiest breads in the world to make. It only requires four ingredients and can be ready and baked up in 30 minutes. Now the rising agent in this bread is baking soda, hence where the bread gets its name, soda bread. So what you want to do is go and look in the back of your pantry somewhere, I'm confident you have one of those little orange boxes of baking soda, and get that out. Now don't worry if it's expired. Baking soda often can still work past its expiration date. And I'll show you a little test to do to see if it's still active. All you're going to want to do is take a little baking soda, put it in a glass, and then get some vinegar. It can be any vinegar you have. This is just my homemade apple cider vinegar. And if that's something you want to learn how to make, I'll be sure to put a link uh, in the iCards and in the description below. But any vinegar will work. And you're just going to pour the vinegar over the baking soda. Woo! Ah! <laughs> Well, my baking soda is indeed very active, and that's exactly what you're looking for, for it to foam up like that. Now, don't worry if you don't have any baking soda. Another option that you can use is baking powder. It changes the texture of the bread slightly, but it's still very delicious. However, if you use baking powder, you're going to need a little more than you will with baking soda. And I'll put a link in the description underneath this video that'll take you over to my website where it'll have the printable recipe and I'll explain what you need to do if you use baking powder versus baking soda and all of that. Uh, but the bottom line is we're going to go with one teaspoon of baking soda and if you're using baking powder you're going to probably want to use about a tablespoon. But if you are using baking soda the secret is to not overdo. Baking soda has somewhat of a distinct flavor and a teaspoon is really all you ever need to rise uh, a quick bread like this. In this case our quick bread is a soda bread. Uh, but if you tend to err on the side of wanting to put in more baking soda, try to rein yourself in because it can affect the flavor. And then the other ingredient you're going to need is a teaspoon of salt. And this is just a fine ground sea salt, but use whatever salt you have. And then the next ingredient that you're going to need is your liquid. And this is one and a half cups of buttermilk. But don't worry if you don't have buttermilk. There are a lot of ways to make substitutes for buttermilk. And I have a video which I'll link to in the iCards and in the description below where I go over all those various options. But quickly, what I'll tell you is that you can just put in your one and a half cups of milk and add in a little bit of vinegar or a little bit of lemon juice and that'll cause the milk to curdle. It may take about an hour and it'll get nice and thick and it'll have the consistency of buttermilk. Some other options are thinning yogurt to the consistency of buttermilk, thinning sour cream to the consistency of buttermilk, and if way back in your pantry you have a little jar of uh, cream of tartar, that can work too. You can add in a teaspoon or two into some milk and that'll cause it to curdle and create somewhat of a soured milk, a buttermilk substitute. Now let's talk about the star of the show, the flour. I've got two cups of all-purpose flour in here. Some of you may know it as plain flour. Now I'm just going to make this bread, this soda bread, today with all-purpose flour. But you can use a variety of flours to make this bread. Now we're going to discuss the different types of flour that you can use to make this bread. But the first thing we're going to do is add in another cup of flour because this recipe calls for three cups of flour. And I just wanted to show you that all you need to do is scoop your flour right out of your bag and just level it off with your finger. Nothing fancy, no need to weigh anything or sift anything. So as I said, I've got all-purpose flour in here. You can also use bread flour or any whole grain flour. You can use whole wheat flour. You can use spelt flour. 
you can use einkorn, any type of flour that you want. Now I have a recipe where I show you how to do this with part all-purpose flour and part whole grain flour. And I'll be sure to link to that in the iCards and in the description below. So if you're in that transition phase where you're transitioning from a processed foods kitchen to a traditional foods kitchen and you want to incorporate more whole grains into making this soda bread, you can refer to that recipe. And if you're real gung-ho and you're 100% traditional foods kitchen and you want to make this with all whole grain flour, you certainly can do that. However, I just want to let you know that if you've not done it before, your final product, your final Irish soda bread, will be a little denser, but also in a way more traditional because there is some controversy as to whether there should be any uh, all-purpose or plain flour in soda bread. So let's go ahead and just sprinkle our salt over this. And then when it comes to the baking soda, you can put this you know, over a little sifter and just to get out any lumps that might be in the baking soda. Uh, or you can just put it right into your hands and just give it a little rubbing like this. Then you just want to take a whisk or a wooden spoon, spatula, whatever you have, and just give your flour a real good stir around to make sure that the salt and the baking soda are well incorporated with the flour. Alrighty, well once you get this all well incorporated, the next thing that we're going to do before we even add in our wet is to make sure that our oven is preheated to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. Now there are a lot of things that you can do to jazz up soda bread. And one is adding some type of dried fruit. If you want to do that, to add little currants, for example, you would put them in at this point. You could add up to a cup of whatever you wanted, and you would just want to toss it around so that it was well coated by the flour. And that will make sure that your dried fruit stays well distributed throughout your soda bread and doesn't all sink to the bottom. Now another thing that you can add at this stage, which you would actually add before you put in any dried fruit, would be butter. Now, this is totally optional, but if you want, you could put in about two tablespoons of butter, nice cold butter, and then just work it with your hands uh, to the point where it was just sort of like sand, sand-like and maybe a little few little pea-sized pieces of butter throughout your flour. However, that's completely optional. And today I wanted to show you how to just do a very basic soda bread. And speaking of additions, another thing that you can do at this point is add an egg to your buttermilk and just give it a little whisk to break up the egg and incorporate it with your buttermilk and then add that to your dry ingredients. And that will make your soda bread richer as well. But again, that's completely optional and we're just going to stick with the basic version today. So now what I'm going to do is just make a little bit of a well right in the middle of the dough and of the dough of the flour where we can pour in our buttermilk and then I'll show you how to mix this up. And one other thing I wanted to mention, if you want to add a little extra nutrition to this, you can also add in some oats, some old fashioned rolled oats. And you would do that at the same time that you were adding in your dried fruit, about two tablespoons, but again, completely optional. Now what you want to do is mix this with a very light, gentle hand and there's no kneading involved because we want to keep this bread as light as possible. So you're just going to kind of go in with an open hand. You'll often hear Irish cooks say, you know, make your hand like a little claw and just go in and start to incorporate, go all around with your open hand, incorporating the flour into the liquid. And I'll overlay a little video so you can see exactly what I'm doing. But just see, well, it's hard to see now with all this wet dough, but you're just keeping your hand very open and just mixing, coming up from the bottom to make sure that you incorporate all the flour and just keep working this until you get all the flour moistened, but it really shouldn't take more than maybe 30 seconds to a minute. So that'll come together very quickly. It'll be kind of a wet, sticky dough. That's exactly what you're looking for. And if for any reason when you're uh, blending it all together and you find that it's very, very dry, uh, you can add maybe a tablespoon more of the buttermilk. But just be careful. Don't overdo. Sometimes if it's very dry in your kitchen or dry outside, you may need a little more. And if it's very wet, 
you may actually need a little less. So if you find it's too wet, then you can always just sprinkle a little flour, but don't even really worry about it because once you get it out down onto your board, we're gonna be adding more flour. The more important thing is if you feel it's exceptionally dry, you can add in another tablespoon, but this was perfect. The cup and a half worked great. And it should lift out quite easily out of your bowl with most of the bowl looking clean. Now you just wanna get a flat surface. I'm just using a cutting board here and sprinkle it liberally with some flour. Just smooth that all around on your surface. And then we're gonna go in here and we're gonna pull out our dough. Now flour your hands nicely. And all we're gonna do is just work this into a round shape. No kneading at all. And just work it. You can get some flour over there. And it's okay, it's gonna look all craggy and broken up in places, little uh, cracks and whatnot, that's perfect. You definitely, whatever you do, you don't wanna knead this, you don't wanna overwork it. Just get it into your nice round shape and you're perfect. Now, once you get it shaped nicely, it should only take a few turns and a few pats. As I said, we don't wanna overwork it. You have a couple of options as to how to bake it. You can bake it right on just a baking sheet. Some folks call this a jelly roll pan. I like to put a little parchment paper down and then we'll sprinkle it with a little flour. That'll work perfectly. You can also use a cast iron frying pan if you have one of these. And you can, again, just sprinkle a little flour in there and drop your bread right into that. Now, if you wanna get fancy and something that creates quite a good rise on your uh, soda bread is to copy the technique of the no knead breads. And what you'll wanna do is put a Dutch oven into your uh, oven while it's preheating and then take it out carefully, you know, as if you've done the no needs, take it out very carefully with uh, pot holders. Remove the lid, and then you can put this onto some parchment paper and lower it down into the hot pot, put the lid back on, and put it in your oven. And you'll bake it for 25 minutes. After 25 minutes, you'll remove the Dutch oven again carefully, everything's very hot. Remove the lid slip out the parchment paper and put it back into the oven, put the pot without the lid and no parchment paper but the bread intact, put it back into your oven and let it bake for another five minutes. That creates quite something. I'll do that another day, but today I wanna to keep it very basic and very simple because uh, I think most folks will have a baking sheet or a cast iron frying pan. And if you want, if all you have are cake pans, you can definitely bake this in a cake pan. And again, you can just sprinkle it with some flour, or if you want, cut a little round of parchment and then sprinkle that with flour and put your, your dough onto that. But there's something I wanna share with you that I think is so clever. And I can't really remember where I read this or saw a video. I might've read it on a food blog or something, but someone baked, and if you've seen this and you know who it is, let me know in the comments below. So I'll link to their channel or blog post, but they put this dough into their cake pan and then they took a second cake pan and put it on top almost to make like a little baby Dutch oven and baked their Irish soda bread like this. And it looked glorious when he or she, I can't remember, unveiled it. So that's something to experiment with. So today I'm gonna to use my baking sheet and I've got the parchment paper and I've just put a little flour down on that. And then we're just gonna gently pick up our round here, just give it another little shape. <laughs> and then actually, at this point, we're gonna flatten our little, our little perfect round. And we're just gonna get it to about an inch and a half, maybe. Just flatten it out, inch and a half, two inches. And when I say that inch and a half, I mean in height. So you just give it a little, little pat to flatten it out. And then next, the most important thing you need to do is give your soda bread an Irish blessing. And you just wanna take a sharp knife and just make a cross right across the top of the bread, just like that. And then after you've done the blessing, you can poke each of the four corners just like this 
to, as my Irish father would tell me, we'll let the fairies out. And if we let the fairies out, we're gonna get a good rise on our bread. The next thing you wanna do is brush the top of your buttermilk uh, with a little bit of milk, or if you've still got your cup with the little bit of remaining buttermilk that might be in here, we can go ahead and just add a little water to this and brush our bread with that. And you can use your fingers to do this, or if you've got a pastry brush, you can do that, you can use that too. So now after you get this all brushed with your buttermilk or your milk, whatever you're using, if you've put some of the old-fashioned rolled oats into your uh, soda bread, you can go ahead and sprinkle some on top if you'd like to do that. Uh, or you can sprinkle a little flour on top, or you can just leave it plain, which is what we'll do today. Now, once you get your dough all coated beautifully with the buttermilk or the milk, whatever you're using, we're gonna go ahead and put this on the middle rack of our preheated oven, and we're gonna bake it for 30 minutes until it's nice and golden brown, and when you put a toothpick in the middle, it comes out clean. Well, look at this glorious soda bread. I'll over overlay a close-up picture so that you can see it. It just looks beautiful. And it was in my oven exactly 30 minutes to reach this lovely golden brown color. And then I tested it with my toothpick just by pushing it down in the middle and pulling it out. And it came out completely dry. And that's what you're looking for, either dry or with just some dry crumbs on it. You don't want it to have any wet dough or batter on your toothpick when you pull it out of a baked good. And what I recommend is because everybody's oven's a little different, just take a peek at your soda bread at about 25 minutes. And if it's looking nice and golden brown like this, go ahead and test it with your toothpick. And if it comes out clean, it's ready. And if not, just let it go the full 30 minutes. Um, or if your oven tends to run cold, it may need a few extra minutes. But this was perfect at 30 minutes. This is still quite hot, but I just want to tap on it so you can hear the lovely uh, crust that's been created. And I hope you can hear this. It's beautiful. Now it is quite hot, but I'm gonna pick it up and I just wanna show you on the bottom, you'll wanna do the same thing. Can you hear that hollow sound? That's how you know your soda bread's done. Well, soda bread is lovely to slice when it's warm and put some butter on it that'll melt beautifully. But I'm just gonna go ahead and put this on the cooling rack, let it just cool a little bit, and once it's not hot, when, when it, once it's warm and no longer hot, uh, we'll give it a slice and a taste. Well, this has cooled a bit. It's still warm, but it's just looking glorious. Now, what we'll do is I've got a serrated knife and we'll cut it right down the middle and I'll show you how the crumb looks. Oh, hear that, isn't that glorious? Well, this is your basic soda bread, your Irish soda bread, as we call it in the United States. But I learned from a cookbook back from the 1940s written by, and I believe her name is Maura Laverty. And I'll be sure to put a link if you enjoy uh, reading about food history and all of that, I'll put a link in the description below. And she says that in Ireland, uh, it's actually called uh, cake bread instead of Irish soda bread. And I thought that was a, a wonderful description because it's almost a little cake-like, but it, Nonetheless, it's a wonderful uh, substitution uh, for bread if you have no yeast or sourdough starter on hand. Well, let's go ahead and cut a slice here and give it a taste. Well, this just looks so lovely. I really am happy with the texture and the crumb, as they say. I'll take another picture and overlay that uh, so that you can see it as well. Now I've got some nice butter here and of course it's Irish butter. I love the Kerrygold <laughs> Irish butter. I took it out a little early so that hopefully it's soft enough to spread on this because I think we've got to put some, some Irish, <laughs> Irish butter on our Irish soda bread. All right, let's give this a taste and see how it is. Mmm. Mmm. It's really delicious. <laughs> Excuse me. Well, I think you're gonna really like this bread. It's so delicious. I even had to give it a second bite. And it's got a wonderful texture, very similar to bread, as if you had used yeast. I think you're gonna be very impressed with this. Well, if you'd like to try more recipes for making bread with yeast, without yeast, with sourdough, a whole variety of breads, be sure to click on this video over here 
and I'll see you over there in my Texas Hill Country kitchen. Love and God bless.